Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video, which we only have five videos from this past week on our main channel. If we ever decide to skip a day, usually it's because we like had an event go on where we didn't have enough time to get the video ready or whatnot. I don't know. What was the reason last week? We had a really tiring week this last week. Yeah, I think that was it. I think it was just that it was late and neither of us had reviewed the video for the next day. Yeah. I think it was like 10, well, 9 or 10 or uh -huh. something like that. I forget what it was, but... Yeah, so we just didn't get it together yeah. in time. If we ever are going to skip a day, I always post about it in YouTube community on our channel. Um, just because, like, I want to let you guys know we're so consistent usually that if we do skip a day and I don't say anything anywhere, we usually receive a lot of messages, which is so sweet of you guys to check on us. But anyway, if you're ever wondering, you could check the community tab and see if I posted something about it. Anyway, uh, let's just jump into the videos from last week. The first one was cutting flowers and planting more fall crops. So in that video, I had have um, a friend of mine who her sister her little sister was graduating was having a graduation party and uh, I cut a few buckets of flowers that they could use at the party so we did that and then uh, I planted the rest of our fall crops like everything is done <laughs> everything is in the ground and every last inch of space out in the cut flower garden is full of something uh, as well as in the raised beds up here which is always a good feeling like we're utilizing all of our space I do need to pull those ruby perfection cabbage though I need to do usually when I have a crop like that I'll do one at a time like one one every day and give it to the chickens because you can't give the chickens like eight cabbages mm. for four chickens that just doesn't work out so we'll gradually get that cabbage pulled and plant something else there anyway top comment was from nicole all those who would drive off in the gator with the hose still attached raise your hand i did did you really are you <laughs> yeah. serious oh my goodness i even thought about it because i'm like well i've got the camera on but i think i actually turned the camera off and i put the camera in the gator and then I took off and I was like, <laughs> I was actively thinking about it. And I went back like, oh, these faucets are like two days old Did and I probably it? just broke it. No, I loosened it a little bit. <laughs> It'll be fine. Just the soil needs to just settle back down around that, that post. Thank goodness there was a post in place. Did it just like stop you in your tracks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy said, any tips to get dahlias to last in an arrangement? Nah, not really. They're a short-lived vase flower, like five to seven days at the maximum. And you wanna make sure, like dahlias, they don't continue opening after you cut them. So you do wanna make sure that they're open all the way. Um, look at the back of the flower though. If all the petals on the back of the flower look still like good and fresh, then you'll get the longest face life. If it looks like they're starting to like brown on, on the edges just a tiny bit or kind of wither a little bit, you'll just get, it's an older flower, you know, clearly, but that's where you look for it. It's on the back of the flower. Um, when I cut for, especially for other people, I always try to look at the back flower and give them the freshest ones possible. I wish they were longer lived. They are sure productive, productive plants though. Like you plant one tuber, you get just a mass of flowers from one plant and then you get a whole bunch of extra tubers the next fall. Like if you want to get into like selling flowers and like tubers or seed, dahlias is the way to go. I mean, for all the effort though, it's a lot of effort in Lots terms of, of work. well, it's not a lot of work except for the saving process. Seems like That's a lot of work when you worst. were doing that. Well, it's because I was pregnant. Oh. Yeah. Everything's a lot of work when you're yeah. pregnant. <laughs> Barb said, what is the gorgeous grass that shows up on the right center at about 38 sec seconds into the video? It looks like a gold shaving brush from ancient days. Gold shaving, I'm sure I saw it when you planted it and told us what it was. I have to look, 38 seconds into the video. Hold on. Oh, that is an avalanche calamagratus. It is a feather reed grass. Uh, Carl Forrester is probably the most popular variety. It's an all green uh, leaved grass. Avalanche I love though because it's green with a white stripe so a white variegation up the leaf and then the seed heads are um, that beautiful wheat golden wheat color and they grow so tidy. Um, I hardly ever see them flopped over. I mean it's something that I cut back in the fall. I don't leave them up typically through the winter because they're tall enough that when they get too much moisture they will flop um, but they're just a really versatile tough grass. I do really well in our area. Dana said what's the story behind the Rio 2016 Olympics bucket the zinnias were in wasn't that from when you competed back in 2016 yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> that was back when i did uh was it track did i run the 400 meter i think that's what <laughs> i think that was the, the prize no they i gave think out. you did the swimming that was, was the, the time you did the swimming instead of medals uh for the people who came in last they handed us out buckets <laughs> <laughs> plastic buckets no th that was actually a home depot bucket that's 
they were selling that one, I guess, the year of 2016. Isn't it a Lowe's? I thought it was a Lowe's bucket. No, I think Is it I Home Depot? I don't, does it matter? <laughs> I don't know. Either way, I like it because it's gray instead of orange, like the typical buckets. Yeah. We have a Home Depot in our area closest to us, not a Lowe's. So that's just where we go for stuff, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I, I'm not a huge fan of the bright orange. I used to work at Lowe's, you know. I mean, you know that, but in the garden maybe, department. In the garden department, yeah. That when is I was the craziest like thing to me. Seventeen, eighteen. Uh -huh. I must have been. I must have been eighteen, nineteen. How much of that uh, did you soak in while you were there? Well, okay. I didn't actually work out in the flowers. I worked uh, like in the, the grills and lawn mowers and stuff oh, well, like that. Oh, that makes total sense. Yeah. 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 So I wasn't out with the plants, uh -huh. but I was still part of the like lawn and garden right. section. Huh. But anyway. Cindy said, I didn't see any love in a puff in your buckets. Did you grow them this year? I planted them because of you and have enjoyed them immensely. Um, love in a puff, I do have some out there. I planted them in the areas where the sweet peas died after the spring, where they were just put through the ringer with weather. I popped love in a puff in their spots. And, you know, honestly, I haven't really thought about them. I, they look good. I haven't cut any for arrangements. And I, I really enjoy them in the garden. But when they're on a trellis, they are incredibly hard to cut because you have to unwrap them. They just get themselves so wrapped up on the trellis that it's kind of a chore to actually use them in a cut arrangement. You have to want it. But definitely worth growing now as an annual vine. Amy said, the garden looks wonderful. Thank you. Question, can you tell me at what time in growth is the best to cut zinnias so they last the longest in a vase? I always seem to wait too long and the petals fall off. I'll just wait until I, I don't know. Like there's probably a formula, but I just go out there and whatever ones look really fresh and nice, uh, th those are the ones I cut. And I usually wait till they're pretty much open. And I can tell usually, cause you know, I've got them in all different stages. I can tell the ones that are a little bit more aged uh, in, in their life. So anyway, I should probably look that up. Missy says, Laura, my sister told me to check out your channel and let me tell you, I'm so glad I did. I have tried so many new ideas when I thought I could not do it or it would not grow. I look forward to watching you guys every day. Are there any flowers that you do not like to grow or take care of? I'm not a huge fan of taking care of houseplants. I like houseplants. I like the way they look in moderation, uh, but I'm not, I'm not one to like to take care of them. I think it's because I was in charge of them down at the garden center. Like I ordered them, I cared for them every single day. <sighs> that gets to be a lot after a while. Um, I don't know. I think why I like outside so much too is there's seasonality to it. So you take care of things a lot through the season and then they die <laughs> or lose their leaves and you get a break for a couple of months. And I think I need that. I think I would have a hard time gardening in an area where it was like year round gardening because I crave a change in season and I, I crave just doing something different. So like naturally we change to more, is that really loud? They're, the guys are finishing up our sidewalk today up in front of the house and I think they're compacting it. Mm. So if it's a little bit loud, that's what it is. Um, okay. Oh yeah, so naturally like in the late fall and winter we shift to houseplants because there's not as much going on out here and because I haven't focused on houseplants all year or all the growing season, I'm interested in working with them again. And then by the time things are going in the early spring, I'm kind of sick of houseplants and I move on to other things. I don't know. Have I mentioned like growing anything in particular that I don't like? I think um, I can't. I don't know if there's any plants that you don't like taking care of. Uh, you're not a fan of any most red blooming flowers. Yeah, I like them in the cut flower garden though. I love having red out there because it's just it makes it more versatile for more bouquets and it works out there because you just have so much color. I like red leaves though, and a lot of people when I talk about like a red leaf leafed red foliage foliage yeah. on uh, plants, I. I don't know, people act surprised that I like that, but it's completely different than red blooms to me. And the only reason I don't do red blooms in the interior of our garden is I usually have more soft colors going on, you know, peach and um, soft pinks, coral, purples. And when you add a red or a really hot orange color to that, it just is a little bit jarring. And that's the only reason why, really. It's not that I don't like them per se. Ethan said, uh, have you ever considered raising livestock for food? Uh, you know, I haven't really thought about it for our own property. We really, I could say we don't have the space for it, but that's a lie. <laughs> like we yeah. could have, we could have kept some of the front part pasture. Um, and I would like pasture around us at some point because I would like to get a couple horses at some point in my life. Not um, to eat. Not to, no, <laughs> let me clarify. We do have chickens, not for meat either. We only have chickens for eggs. They're our pets. Um, and 
I don't know. I mean, I was raised around that. We are a farming agricultural community, uh, farming community, lots of cattle ranches and things like that around our area. And, you know, uh, my family has always raised a couple of cows every year, and that's how we get our beef. Uh, and that way we know it's an organic grass-fed beef. Like, you really cannot compare it to others. It's so much better. It is so much better. Um, but it's not something I've actually thought about for here. We don't really need to. I mean, it's something we could definitely do if we, if it came down to it, but I don't know. Not super interested in that, I guess. I just want to have pets for the most part. Next video was final tour of the annuals we planted at our local community college. So we just toured you around TVCC, which is our local community college. I went there. You took some college classes there. My mm -hmm. brother teaches there. The man we bought um, this house from teaches there as well. I took actually six of his classes mm -hmm. and he taught my brother English in middle school. Like it's such a small community, you guys. Um, it seems like we're all connected somehow or have some kind of memory with, you well, know. Well, you're right, it is a small community. It is. Anyway, we went down there to show you how the plants are doing and uh, I showed Rosa, which I don't think she really wanted to be on camera close up, but we just showed you who's taking care of them. And it, they just have done a phenomenal job. The plants look amazing. And the reason why we say it's a final tour is that I don't think much is gonna change between now and the end of the season. We're starting to get cooler. Last night, the low was 45. The night, I don't know if it actually got to 45. Uh, the night before, I took a screenshot in the morning. I can't remember what time, hold on. I took a screenshot of our my weather app because it was 48 degrees. It was at 6.23 a.m. and it was 48 degrees outside. It's just, it's breathing new life into things, but things aren't gonna really like put on a bunch of growth at this point. And we're switching stuff over now too. I have um, the bulk of my fall order is here. I usually place one large order for fall plants and most of it's here. I've got a few more things coming this week and then we'll start. It's hard though. There are some planters I want to pitch. Like I'm done. The plants are okay, but they're just like not amazing. But like the, the pots along our fence line, we've never planted those for fall, I don't think. No, well, typically they get so much sun and the water is so consistent that we never have an issue with them until like frost well it's super tunia is like sometimes they look amazing up until like thanksgiving yeah some years which is amazing so we'll leave those alone and a lot of our other things that are just full and amazing we'll leave um but so it can make it a little bit hard for fall stuff a lot of my stuff i end up putting in the ground because i just don't want to disrupt you could do something maybe in the urns on the west side i could for fall no i just that area is so hard for me because I love how simple it is. Mm -hmm. It's simple, but not at the same time. Like yeah. there's such huge winter interest in Well, there's so structure. much blind space maybe is what and you I, mean. I think I crave that. Yeah. And I like the boxwoods in there. I thought at first I didn't like the boxwoods because they don't contrast the arbs, but I like it. They mm. need to be trimmed though a bit. Anyway, I was thinking though, up along the new brick walkway on the left-hand side, that's gonna be all flower bed. We could get, like get a fountain and like do up a big fall display in there with corn stalks and pumpkins and all kinds of stuff. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Can't do anything around the Hartley still because we're still waiting on HVAC, which yeah. I think you're gonna check on today. Right. Um, yeah, that's kind of a little bit of a bummer because I feel like I just I want to do something with that space and we just it doesn't we can't yet because there's a whole bunch of digging that still needs to happen around it and then I can't really put stuff on the ground because the flooring needs to be put in. Oh, you guys know how it goes. It's like, oh, yeah. All right, so Rebecca said, I found a honeybee in my garden today. Yay, that's exciting. This has been years in the making, learning about plants from your videos, slowly in a smaller space and with a smaller budget, trialing plants in a totally different climate to you. I have some gorgeous salvia, zinnia, and angelonia growing up beautifully, all inspired by you. And while the sunbirds and butterflies have been enjoying this for a while, it was a thrill to see a honeybee for the first time today. Thanks for your information and inspiration and all around positivity. Oh my goodness. Well, if that doesn't lift your spirits, I don't know. You guys are like the best. <laughs> I, I, all I have to do, if I'm having a day where I'm just like, oh, I'm just tired or I feel like, I don't know. I, I think we all have down days about our space too. You look out and you're like, oh, I wish that looked better or mm -hmm. I wish I didn't have to do this or whatever. All I need to do is get into our comment section from like that day's video and I all of a sudden feel lifted up. So, yeah, it's thank like you. the most uplifting It is. You guys section. are the most positive people ever. I mean, we deal with our 1% of negativity, which is low compared to what a lot of other people have to deal with. But I mean, largely it's just such an amazing thing. 
Anyway, uh, Karen said, you have a really changed my mind about you just using perennials. I always thought annuals were a waste of money, but now I get it. The beautiful colors are well worth it. Great job at the college to you and your groundskeeper. Um, yeah, so I explained the difference between, well, I mean, you guys know the difference between annual and perennial. You know, annuals come back, perennials come back every year, annuals you have to replace every year, and but they grow completely differently. And the reason why we save specific spots for annuals or in like this situation, we leaned heavily on annuals is because the show they provide from day one until frost, you can't compare it to anything else. There's no perennial out there that will perform like an annual will. So, well, I can I can understand, you know, uh, in some situations it may seem wasteful to do annuals all the time. Like I've reduced the amount, a little bit, the amount of space we do annuals around here. Yeah, I always kind of wish it was more actually. Yeah, Aaron would have it be Disneyland if you if you could. And honestly, like you could see it in the raised beds around the fountain area down there. When we planted the annuals at the beginning of the season, the salvias were glorious and the rudbeckias looked poor, mm -hmm. like very small. And then when we went down to give this tour, the salvias looked pretty poor, rudbeckias were amazing. Mm -hmm. So they all have kind of their own season that they look amazing, but the rest of the time they're just kind of meh, you know? Um, and while I feel like they are useful in a garden space and I like perennials, we, you know, I've been trying to use more perennials around. Um, annuals just, especially in a commercial situation, do they, are good. I like perennials that have, are more like foliage based. You know, yeah. like um, hostas. hostas and Brunnera. Uh, Brunnera. Uh -huh. Yeah, things like that mm -hmm. that just look the same. All the time. All the time. Yeah. And they might throw out blooms here grasses. or there. Grasses. I'm looking yeah, at that, that pen penicetum behind the gazebo that I can see looking amazing. Love that grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, there's some, I don't know, if, I think if you plan your space right too, like when we're planning our new area out in front of the house, I am using, I, I said in the beginning, just trees, evergreens, and shrubs, that's it. But I think along our walkways, I wanna do a perennial border around each walkway because it's just like echinaceas and stuff like that. See, I think it should be an annual border. Oh, it's too much. Because I want, um, I don't know, I don't wanna to have to go out there and plant all the time. But you're gonna to have to go deadhead and stuff. No, you're not, because here's the deal. Okay. <laughs> if you plan properly, like if I use all things that come up and they're starting to like get their foliage base at the beginning of the season and then look amazing in like midsummer through the rest of the year, I'm down with that. Um, like I'm using sedums, rudbeckias, um, echinaceas, heliopsis, denim and lace Russian sage, some one of the ones I have out there now, cardinal flowers, stuff you don't have to shear back. That's the thing. Mm. Perennials like salvias are gorgeous, but you have to shear them back for the second show. Daisies, same same deal. Um, I am in it out there for stuff that you don't have to do a mid-season gotcha. prune back. Sure. Just stuff like sedum's amazing all the time. It looks amazing when it's little and just coming out of its winter sleep. And then it's just mostly foliage based. And then it gets the blooms late summer and into fall. You don't have to do a single dang thing to that plant except for cut it back. Yeah. That's what I want. I'm with you. Anyway, are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Cindy said, nice to see your brother. What does he teach? So he does teach down there at the college. He teaches mostly stuff surrounding like history and English literature. I don't know, maybe, has he done any speech classes or anything? He'll pick up some random stuff. Right. Uh, but he teaches a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and he does, like, he's teaching some summer stuff right now. Or maybe it's done. I can't remember exactly where the schedule's at. Maybe the summer stuff's done and they're getting ready for fall. I don't know. He's always had a really diverse schedule. Like, you know, he used to work um, not that long ago, like a day or two at Andrews every yeah. week. Mm -hmm. um, and then he was also in charge of that grant program yeah. for several years. Right. And he wasn't teaching during that time. Or maybe... He was teaching. He was teaching just but real seldom. Yeah. Uh, but I think he's, uh, he's teaching full time now. Yeah. So. Yeah. It varies, seems like. Yeah, he does it. I can't even imagine. Like, because your dad teaches. Mm -hmm. Like, it... P people who can get up on a consistent basis in front of groups of people, that is a special skill and a special gift that somebody is given. Especially if they're good at it. Like, your dad's good at it. My brother's good at it. The guy we bought this house from is good at it. I liked his classes so much. Um, yeah, that is something else, you know? There's a lot of people who have asked me to come speak at stuff. <laughs> horrible at it because I hate it I hate it's so different I think people assume that because I'm in front of a camera and I'm talking I'm talking to you guys right now but it's different like I have Aaron sitting in a chair in front of me um, you know in a camera and it was very uncomfortable for the first years 
<laughs> of doing it. Um, but it's completely different than getting up in front of people. I remember at the Grand Garden Show that one year, I was one of the keynote speakers, which, oh, they're probably regretting that choice <laughs> when I was up there. Um, but how many people were in that room? Like between five and 600 people? Yeah, something like that. Never again. My speaking fee went way up after that. <laughs> like I, I made my fee to where like everyone just says no. Yeah. <laughs> at this well, point. you didn't even really have a speaking fee. No, not really. But we give a really high number. I, uh, well, that's... Because if they, if somebody wants to pay a really high number, it might be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For all of the angst it gives me. Like, honestly, I would know about, like, a, a presentation like that that I'd have to do a year in advance almost. Right. And it was like a giant black cloud that would follow me through the entire year. Right. Oh, I just don't like that at all. You know, I actually, I get a lot of emails, people that are trying to email you, but um, that want you to come speak at, like, small little garden clubs. Mm-hmm. And um, I just think to myself, like, oh, that's like Laura's nightmare, going and speaking at a garden club somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody has You'd their own You'd love thing. to go hang out with them. Yes. Like, let's, like if you were just let's going make and... Let's some cocktails and just, yeah, like, like, have just, some appetizers. Yeah, like a sit-down <laughs> chat, yeah, you know, where everybody yeah. participates. You would mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. But the actual speaking part of yeah, it. Yeah, like, let's sit down at a table here and share a meal. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of, of interaction I'm after. Um, Morphine Girl said, I was so excited to plant the pink gomfrina and the sun incredible sunflowers last year, but they did nothing but ride the struggle bus. <laughs> that's, that's a funny way to put it. Are they meant for hot environments and not Michigan weather? You know, I see them in Michigan. Proven Winners is like mostly based out of Michigan. Yeah. So uh, of all the places that they trial plants, Michigan is like the first place that they trial plants. But don't feel too bad because I've had a, an issue with gonfrina this year too. I think every year it will have a struggle with something. Gonfrina has been one of those this year that it's like it's wanting just to be completely yellow. Mm -hmm. And I, I've had really great success with it in years past and we're not really doing anything different. So I don't really know what the deal is. I'll have some though, like in the butterfly garden, for example, I've got four planted around the pillar. The two on the right hand side look great. Two on the left hand side are struggling, but they are all on the same water system. There's no, I rooted around in there and there's no plugged up emitters or anything mm. like that. So I don't know what the deal is. And the ones down at the college, they may be getting too much water, but those I wanted to rip out early in the season. We left them because they did have a little bit of pink color on them. Uh, but yeah, Gonfrina, I would say wants it hot and dry for the most part, but it's yeah. still, you know, we've seen it in Michigan. Stinky. It is a stinky plant. Some people say it doesn't have any stink to them, but it does, it does for us. Randy said, can these plants be ordered? If so, from where? Um, you can order them. I would check with your lo local garden center though, because oftentimes they'll have growers that will grow them and you know you might be able to get a, a hold of them. That's the best way because they'll be least, the least expensive that way. Because if you order direct from Proven Winners, which you absolutely can, they offer it as a convenience really only, but the prices are high because shipping is hard for plants and it, it involves a whole lot. Um, so, but they understand that not everybody has access access to a garden center that will supply them with those types of plants. And not every garden center can carry everything. Like I don't buy 100% of everything from my parents' garden center, I can't. Mm -hmm. Because they only have so much room. It's a finite amount of space and they can't carry everything that the world has to offer in terms of plants. So I'll find something from somewhere else and think like, oh, I need to pick that up. Or even like we bought a Wichita Blue Juniper over at Franz Witte this last week because it was the right size. It was like beautiful. And I know my parents can get Wichita Blue Junipers, but it was just like, you know they didn't have one at the time that you wanted yeah, one yeah and um anyway i don't know how i got onto that tangent other than the fact that a lot of times um a garden center can sometimes get stuck in a little bit of a rut of what they order every year because they know what sells and they maybe don't want to try something new so it's possible they may be able to get it for you if they know there's interest so i would talk with them first otherwise you can go to provenwinners.com and like the shop tab or whatever and you can order through that shop tab or you can just search the plant mm -hmm. and order that way. In Shannon's Kitchen said, what did you study at the college when you were a student there? Was it related to agriculture? No, it was not. I actually only just got my associates there, which is all they really offer. But they also have a program, a uh, RN program. Um, so I was, I got my CNA. I was going to be a nurse. I wanted to be an RN. And um, I quickly realized that I didn't, that's also a gifted position too. You have to be gifted the ability to nurse people and um, I can nurse plants I do better in that realm um, anyway so I just went and got my associates in general studies 
in the end uh, from there. But the plan was to go through the RN program after I got my associates. Miriam said, thank you for the update. So interesting to see how these plants perform through the season. Will these perform until first frost? Yes, and many of them will perform past the first frost. The only ones that might be subject to a little bit of like are the potato vines and uh, coleus. And a lot of those plantings are like the containers underneath, um, like the canopy of trees or containers closer to the buildings. Oftentimes those will last through light frost as well because they're a little more protected. The uh, potato vines out in the raised beds that are a little bit more exposed might suffer a little bit, but most of those things will last through October at least. So you really, and we could have planted earlier. We could have probably planted mid to late April. Mm -hmm. We would have been safe. And when they last all the way through October, what is that like? So full May, June, July, August, September, October, and then half of April, seven and a half months out of the year. That's really good. If they ask us to do it again next year, I feel like we could be a lot more efficient oh, yes. in our like planting, ordering and, planting. and everything. Man, I feel like I was kind of cobbling for a lot of it because I had a list. We didn't even plant all the planters. They decided halfway through they didn't want, like, um, there were some planters they decided yeah. they didn't want to have planted because of water and and It was just too hard to get staff. water to them. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, they didn't have the staff to take care of as many as they thought they were going to be able to do, and there was no drip to them. But, um, yeah, I think, I think we'll be able to do a lot better. And now we know how, like, some of the things do down there. Yeah lots more potato vine i think mm -hmm. it's such a wonderful plant sandy said who is we you cl clearly have a crew working uh tammy said if you watch the planting videos you see that she and her husband and their employee paul did the planting the college did the upkeep afterwards and that's exactly right um so aaron and i went down for a little bit of it and did it ourselves a lot of the containers paul came down when we i planted up all of the the two entryways Paul came along afterward and watered them in because there was no drip yet. And then Paul helped us with the planting of the raised bed area. We just like, I thought, sometimes an, I think I can do a lot more than I actually can. <laughs> I can get a lot done in a day, but sometimes like we called in Paul kind of afterward, right? We were like, oh, I think we're gonna need some help with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did. So he came in and we took turns, like I would og holes and he would plant and then I would, you know, he would take the auger and we we're kind of just going back and forth and we got it done pretty quick which is nice. Next video was planting a Wichita blue juniper, which I just talked about, and the blue blazes hyssop. Um, so we had just picked up a beautiful load of plants. We went over to Franz Witte, Aaron and I, just like kind of on a whim one afternoon, I had a couple hour break and I really wanted some fresh stuff. And so we ran over there and picked up some things that we liked. And it's always fun to have, especially right now with the new cooler temperatures, it makes you feel like, oh, I can do this again. It's rejuvenated. <laughs> yeah. Um, Karen said, anyone else just say, whoa, when the drone goes up to show the progress of the new area, it's going to be phenomenal. Yeah. Seeing it from that perspective, I think it's helpful for a lot of people. We, you know, we're in it every day, so we know how it's all connected and stuff. But when we're working in little pockets, that's all you're seeing like on a daily basis. So seeing the whole thing from above, kind of how it's put together, kind of, I don't know. I think it's going to keep looking better and better oh, too, yes. because some of the, the colors that you see from above are going to change from like, you White know, dirt. Well, yeah, we still have a, a, like oddly mulched areas. <laughs> well, we had ex some extra mulch, not extra. It was, you know, we got bulk mulch to put in the cut flower garden just for this year. And so we had it dumped in a certain spot, kind of like in front of our dumpster area. And you can only pick up so much with the bucket of the tractor without scraping the white dirt underneath it. So we were left with these like kind of random spread out piles of mulch and it, we just kind of spread it out yeah. <laughs> in a random shape. It looks weird. It does. Our goal, it, though, is hopefully this fall to have both areas mulched. Either, I actually don't mind the look of the wood chips. At first, I was like, but we're not getting them on a super consistent basis. The tree company that we go through, Natural Tree, uh, they drop off loads when they're in the area. They work all around this area, all around the valley. And, um, and we only want stuff that's clean, like free of disease or anything like that. And a lot of times when the people are having things removed, it's because it has an issue. So they're really careful about what they drop off. So it's not like we're getting wood chips all the time. It is wonderful when they're here, when they do it, because mm -hmm. it's free. Um, and I, I like the way it looks. Our blue spruce is out there the remains of our blue spruce. They chipped that up and dumped right, it for us. Right. And that has been spread out there and there's lots of pine cones that made it through the chipper. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, need to, I need to find some kid who wants to come over. <laughs> I wonder though if, if we should out. just, uh, you know, kind of bite the bullet and just have a bunch of compost delivered. Yeah, and just- it, I think it'd probably be a good investment in yeah. that 
land out there as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, the wood chips would be fine and they would break down over time. Mm -hmm. But I think just having compost brought in and spreading that, we could make the whole area all look clean and consistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, the wood chips, though, have helped so much with the dust. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, everything. The grass coming up, um, the new grass pathways are looking phenomenal. As soon as those are up and established, then we're going to start with, like, one section at a time. Or is your goal to have the whole perimeter grassed, <laughs> seeded by the fall? Oh, the perimeter of the cut fire Yeah, iron? where the, the pathways attach. Yeah, I'm not in a huge rush to do that. I, I will probably do it this year. You think so? Um, I'm kind of thinking to myself, though, how we want to do it. Like, do I want to put some comp... Do I want to try to take the mulch off? Or do I want to... Probably be easiest to try to take just, the mulch off. Or just till it in. Well, we don't have a tiller right now. <gasps> you sell it? Yeah. You did? Well, no, it went with the tractor. Oh, yeah, Aaron um, upgraded his tractor to something bigger. So the the tiller wasn't big enough. The gotcha. tiller that we had wasn't big enough to go with the bigger the bigger tractor we got. Right. And uh, they can't get us a new tiller till February. Oh, really? That's how far out they are. Sure. So the options we are... We could rent one, I you know. I don't know that the seed... Well, the seed where it landed, did you see? Like, mm -hmm. it's coming up through the mulch. Yeah, so maybe if we just, uh, like, raked some of the mulch back mm -hmm. and... You know, we could rake it into the, the cut bucket. Cut flower garden. You could rake it into the, well. I don't know that you really want to spread it in the cut flower garden. I don't think it matters. It'll all just start incorporating in. Yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. It's been nice, though, to have that out there this year. I remember spreading that. Oh, my goodness. That was a hot job. And dust, dirty, dusty job. Because the wind was always blowing this spring. Always. Always blowing. Ah so glad it's gonna be fall here pretty quick. Rebecca said, are you gonna be doing any more DIY fall decorations and showing us how to decorate your home for fall? That's the plan. I know for sure we're gonna be doing some fall planting, fall containers. I do have an idea for a DIY. Um, I just haven't like figured it out perfectly yet. You need a prototype? A prototype. I need to do something to make sure it's gonna work. Usually I like to, especially if it's something I've not done before. I want to try it out just to make sure it's easy, it's affordable, it's something that, you know, it's a good DIY. I don't know. I don't yeah. want it to fail for anybody. So anyway, that that is the plan. We have done far less of that. And I don't it's just kind of a product of how our life is. You know, we have so much more going on. Um, you know, so we naturally do more projects where we're planting or harvesting or whatever, you know, life kind of changes a little bit. Yeah. I don't know, my interest level too, it changes. Like I used to do succulents all the time. Now I'm like- Probably we'll go back to it at some point. Yeah, at some point. But right now my interest level is just not there. And I'm not gonna force anything either. It's just kind of like, this is what we're doing, you know, and whatever fits in naturally, so. Carson said, are you going to offer tours down the road? Oh, uh, I don't know. It would be fun. I would love to do it. Yeah, you know, if we had the same crew that organized the first one, Laura and Linda and Christy and Kelsey and Shelly and Heather, and there were other people who helped out, if we had that same crew again, possibly. <laughs> they did such a phenomenal job, and it was kind of like I just had to make sure our space was ready. And they did everything else, and they thought of everything, and they really, like, they respected our privacy, and they respected, uh, they were just so, like wonderful mm -hmm. i think we would have to have a crew like that for sure if we did that because this is our home too and that makes it a little bit uh different i think uh yeah i don't know want we'll to just see what happens martha said love 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 the drone footage the, that juniper is gorgeous does it have that distinctive juniper smell and does the hyssop spread like mint does? Um, so yes, it has a, the juniper smell for sure. And then the hyssop spread like mint, not quite the same. Um, I do think hyssop will kind of come up in the area you've got it in, um, but it doesn't spread like wildfire like mint does. Oh my mercy, it spreads so fast. Judy said, are you going to level out the low spot in your new lawn? I don't think so. I don't think it'll be an issue. I've got, the grass is starting to grow up in it now. Yeah. You know, it's really weedy out there. Um, but there is grass growing and I think that we'll, we'll get it by the end of the year. It's going to look a little bit different, that spot, you know, um, but we'll get it. And I know, I don't think we're going to try to level it out. I think it'd be way too much work because the sprinklers are already in mm -hmm. and given the fact that we don't get that much rain, you know, it'll probably fill up with water, like maybe once a year. Mm -hmm. And once the grass is established, it won't kill the grass in that area. No. 
Well, and I was um, encouraged by how quickly the water did drain from it. It drained in like a day and a half. Less than that, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It might have been leaving less than 24 hours. Yeah. The uh, rest of that was, I'm just thinking that it may, oh, probably no need because you don't get much rain. Yeah. Yep, there you go. I'm just thinking that it may become a trouble spot in the future, maybe a good spot for a smallish pond. You know, if that spot was like kind of middle to the left a little bit, that would have been perfect placement for a pond. You know, I, I don't yeah, know. I disagree with you there. I think it's a perfect spot for a pond. It just seems so weird, like it's just tucked into the far corner. Yeah. You know? Perfect. I feel like that's off from the space. Hmm. It's not like aesthetically, I don't know. If I did a pond out there, so the, the plan was, and it might, in the future, it might happen. We even talked to Greg about it. They designed it. We got prices on stones and all that stuff. But we wanted to do a huge pond right about kind of like flower, cut flower garden from last year placement, but over toward the dumpster area a little bit. Maybe we can pop a picture up. We do have an overhead of my sketch of it. And I wanted to do like the pond uh, in the main section. And then I actually wanted to go underneath the road and do a little bridge and have the driveway go over the pond and then have a little bit of the pond over that that um, area where we just planted the like, hydrangeas or the red bud is um, because I want if we have a pond I really wanted it to look like it was there first I wanted it that's my thing like I have a lot of people yeah, you're really uh, like uh, I want to, to work me with the natural it feels terrain. like you're hung up on it it feels really? like it, it uh, prevents you from doing cool things it, it does probably because I like to work with the natural curvature of the space I don't want nothing it to look nothing about this area is nothing about what you do in your garden is natural to this area it's that is it's very all true. unnatural. <laughs> that is very true. None of these trees would grow. Right. Um, like if Nobody, it was natural, you'd be planting be, elm trees. There wouldn't be a pond. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, so that's to me, true. that is that's just a non-factor. I mean, mm -hmm. I know what you're saying. Yeah. But it's I just it's like things of... to look like it was. It's been there forever. Teresa's garden said, uh, "Will you be lining the driveway and the curved drive through the new property with the white fence? No, we are lining the uh, driveway, the grass." With bricks, though, you know how we have the brick lining uh, the west side flower bed and uh, on both sides. So they're just going to pick up that brick um, and they're going to carry on. So there'll be a brick border around that side and it'll make everything look so clean and tidy. I'm so excited about that. We just need trucks not to drive on it. Yeah. So we're going to need trucks. some indicator like in the winter time of where that yeah, line is. Yeah, I thought is. about that. Um, I'm going to order some of those stakes. It's a good idea. To put in the ground to denote where the oh, that is that is, is a consideration isn't it mm -hmm. we're gonna have to like i need to look at some different options maybe you can find something decorative yeah. for the winter time yeah because it's gonna be white nothingness out there right i hadn't even thought about that the lane will make more sense because the trees you'll right. kind of have an idea of like oh i should be in the middle of yeah. the tree lane right you know well and i've thought about i've seen people ask if we're going to line the other side with trees like we did the lane and i wanted to avoid making it look like like a big ring of trees around that grass area um, i mean it would be helpful for the flow of traffic because i think people naturally just want to follow the line of trees mm -hmm. and they want to go straight instead of turn and that's not a big deal um but if you wanted to direct the flow of traffic to the left you'd have to do something that pulled people that direction like we've a, done a lot of like talking. a sign well yeah because we've done a lot of talking about that because we do i mean we hardly ever leave our house I mean, we do. We leave our house. We're not hermits. We go down to the garden center. Um, we get a lot of our groceries delivered. Yeah. It's like, why why go out we if, door dash if it's everything. not necessary? Yeah. And um, there's Amazon and, yeah. you know. So I think like a lot of people, we've just found ways to have things come to us. But that has in turn let us see how people try to navigate our space, yeah. especially through all the upheaval that this space has gone through in this past year. And it's interesting to see what people do. Like people will go all the way around that triangle garden mm -hmm. or they'll turn in a really awkward way, like to where I think they're going to run into one of the pots. Um, like one time you told me, get your phone out and film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to hit a pot. Um, We're going to need proof that yeah, they hit something. It's just, it's interesting. Doreen says, any thoughts about adding boulders or mounds for interest? We've talked about it. In well, fact, I asked you, you were the just other day. asking, yeah. yeah. You were asking me about if what I thought about mounding up or berming up in the back garden, like mm -hmm. against our neighbor's fence or our fence and our neighbor's. Oh yeah, right. Um to create like a tall mound and maybe do like a pond with a waterfall and a bunch of evergreens and make that back formal garden feel a little bit more like what we're doing up front, like mm -hmm. with a big thick 
thick, wide, a big wide walking path with It doesn't have to be quite as wide. I think you could do maybe like a 10 foot instead of a, a 15 yeah. foot. Look, there's a squirrel. What? Look at, look at Russell. Anyway, uh, where were we at? <laughs> <laughs> I was also asking you if you if you could redo the where the loop is on mm -hmm. the new property, would you have tried to berm any of that up? No. We talked about it, um, but we talked about how much space it would, because we talked about doing like a perimeter berm mm -hmm. and like having the whole sides bermed up to where our hedge and the initial plantings, like around the edges, would be taller and it'd be more private or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I'm really happy with the way it's coming together. Like really happy with it. Yeah. Um, I love at night, we take a lot of gator rides. The kids really like it. Keep Samantha happy forever. Like mm -hmm. she would ride the gator forever. Ever, yeah. if she could, um, she gets like, her arms going. <laughs> yeah. Like she gets really excited about it. Anyway, um, I love driving down the lane, and right now, since it's not thickly planted, you can see across. Like you can, your eyes just have a distance to travel, and I really like the open kind of feel of it. And I know yeah. it won't always be that way, especially in the corners, but I do want the grass area to have that feel. Well, that's why I just think we should plant really tall trees that can be limbed up really high, uh -huh. you know, because then you still have a lot of line of sight. Mm -hmm. So like no crab apples or, or. I know. agree with that in the grass space. I think in the corners though, it's going to be thick because we're doing shrubs. Yeah. In the corners yeah, for corners, sure. I'm, I'm want to do crab apples. I save space for crab apples in particular because I love what they offer to the garden and we don't have a lot we've got red buds out there but not a lot else in terms of spring bloomers we don't even have spring blooming shrubs out there yet but we want to add in like flowering almonds and forsythias lilacs all those kinds of things and crab apples i thought i was getting bit but there was nothing on my arm <laughs> uh, stacy said is it me or did you guys mulch the trees along the lane no nope. uh you know at one point we might have mulched mulch the trees uh, along the east side nope yeah, at one point. You did? We, uh, compost. We put like a really thin layer of compost. This was a long time ago. This I was, have no memory of this. This was earlier in the spring. A, a long time ago? Like yeah. This year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have no memory of that. Maybe that was a project well, you did. Well, you know what? In terms of the lifespan of those trees, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I guess so. Well, funny. And in terms of how many projects we've done this year. Yeah. Like, whew. Uh, Blueberry Muffin said, is it just me or is this a new camera? Yeah, in that video, it probably did look different because I was uh, uh, using one of my nicer cameras oh, to film yeah. you. Usually whenever, it's a Whenever you're camera. filming yourself, I just, I, we've got to find a better camera for you to use. I know. It's, well, I could use the nice cameras. It's just so Well, cumbersome. but oftentimes you can't because there's no stabilization in the nicer cameras. If it's on a tripod? Oh, if it's in a tripod, yeah. Yeah, because you were tripod for the for this video when I was planting. Yeah, but I was, at the beginning, uh, I was using a gimbal. Oh, sure. You just need to be out here filming with me all the time. Yeah, there you go. It'll be easier now that it's not so hot. Yeah. The problem is, is that with those cameras would overheat like that, like in yeah. the summer heat. And right. so our other cameras, our vlog cameras are just, they last longer in the heat. Okay, next video was planting sun-loving shrubs. I planted two butterfly bushes, a blue chip and a Miss Ruby. We planted two nine barks, both of which were summer wine, and then a coral, two coral berries. One of which I had planted in a container last fall and I planted that one out and then one that was still in its container. So we just went through all of the different stats of those plants and showed you where they went out on the new property. Rebecca says, the drone shots got me. I'm sitting here with tears in my eyes, truly overjoyed for y'all. Uh, GA has been my favorite from the very beginning. All the passion for the garden, getting to know each of you as you come on and watching your dreams come true plant uh, by plant and baby by baby. I know this must sound so corny, but I just don't care. That got like a ton of engagement. Did it? Yeah, 895 likes on your comment, Rebecca, because that was really sweet. And I think that was like the general feel. You did an amazing job with the drone footage at the end. I think that was a last minute uh, addition too because the video was done, done. and edited yeah. and then I just got the drone out yeah. later in the evening well Benjamin was just you know seeing him we were talking about it seeing him run through the grass mm -hmm. like with unencumbered by flower beds and trees and stuff in your way that was like it even kind of makes me feel like oh right now I think it's what everybody wants not only for their kids but also for themselves you mm -hmm. know it's like they wish that they were just a kid running through they wish they could go back to being a kid yeah. running through the grass. Yeah. You know. Well, and Benjamin with the he was so excited. Yeah. Um, Doing his little dance. Yeah. 
And Samantha, she would spend all of her time outside too. Like she if could. she's if she's starting to fuss inside for some reason, outside you go immediately. Like she sees that door open, she's happy. Yeah, even inside with the door open, she's happy. Yeah, <laughs> she's my girl. <laughs> She might look like you, but she's my girl <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> the both kids got my eyes though. Yeah. Both kids got my eye color. Yeah. Paige said, love the drone footage. It's all looking so great. I know uh, you said you're going to be selling the automatic mowers, but is that something you could program for the grass pathways? Just a thought since you'll probably be keeping the sh them shorter anyway. So that's the thing. We have two of those automatic mowers. Um, we installed one on this back garden last fall and we loved it so much mm -hmm. last fall. Uh, that you bought another one for the east side strip, like the grass along the east side strip, because it's a lot of mowing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a lot of around the trees and a lot of, you know, pain in the butt that way. Um, and it was all great through the spring until it got really hot in the summer. And that particular model stays too short. Like even the highest setting on the blade, yeah. just mows it a little bit too short. And so it was looking a little bit more brown and it was, we have to mow it pretty high in the summer to keep, well, moisture retention, keep the grass looking greener. It's just a more efficient for the plant and yeah. for watering and, and such. So um, anyway, you said there's a different model that you can get, same price, right? That, that mows, mows higher. higher. My only concern about that though is that I still don't like the lines, the, that's the good, random yeah. lines in the yard. And you knew that from the beginning. Like, yeah. that's a thing for you, not for me so much, which is odd. You would think, like, because I can be pretty fussy about some things, lots of things, but the lines in the grass, as long as the grass is tidy looking and short, I'm good. Yeah. It, the lines bothered me. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't take it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, are you going to hang on to them for a while? or? I don't know. There's part of me that, you know, we've already got them. And so I, I, part of me wants to, like, just put one out on the new, the big lawn and just see what it looks like. Oh, I think it would drive you nuts, Aaron. Probably. I mean, the lines you put in the grass does look nice. Like, it, he did, you did diagonal ones this last time. Yeah. It takes Aaron one hour to yeah. mow with their current lawnmower. With and I kind of like getting out there and, yeah. and mowing it, too. So yeah. It's so relaxing, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, it is. Mm hmm I liked you know, to mow, yeah. even with our, we just had a self-propelled mower at our last house. Mowing was such a mindless thing for me. I don't know, you just get out there and you can just, you're doing something productive, but not something you have to think about really hard. Right. But yeah, the lines in the grass though, even though they look really nice when it's precise. It looks so good when you, right after you've mowed with a, like a normal mower. Yeah. You got the nice straight lines, it's so, So we're so not good. sure, I guess, what what's gonna happen in that. Yeah, we'll find out. I mean, we'll maybe you'll end up putting them on the pathways if it becomes too much. Allison said that was an e-ticket drone ride at the end. Thank you so much. I cannot recall the genius editor's name. That was Aaron this time. Mm -hmm. um, but shout out to him. Music was perfect. Question about the high tunnels. Are they going away for good um, or relocating? I'm excited for the clean vista. So at this point, we're just going to take them down and hang on to them. Um, you know, if we happen to get our hands on more land around us, at some point we might pop them back up. We might pop one back up out there in an empty spot next year if we decide to. I don't know. I don't know. I doubt it. I, I think we're going to be way, we're going to be operating differently, I think, a little bit next yeah. year. And um, I think more efficiently and better. I think Try to have less plants that we're keeping holding on to. Yeah, there's no, we don't want to have to care for plants for a big portion of the season. Um, so I think we're going to utilize the area around our original greenhouse more efficiently. Um, now that the arbs are gone back there, I think we'll be able to line up things a little bit better. We'll create some grids. Um, Paul's really good at that. Um, to put the plants in to where they won't tip over. Maybe we can set up a drip system to them back there. Mm -hmm. That makes more sense. Um, I don't know. Uh, I am happy to have them, like the thought of them leaving. We're not gonna move them quite yet because you know, Jenny and Jerry are coming this, is it this month yet? Are we in September yet? Almost. Almost. By the time this comes out, it'll be September. Yeah. Um, so they're coming in September. We're going to retrofit the greenhouse so that we can heat it this winter and start seeds and stuff in there. After that's done, then we can take down the high tunnels and move the plants over. And hopefully by then we've made it maybe through more of those plants, maybe given some away and then planted more on the new property so we don't have as many. Mm -hmm. We have 100 at last roses in there right now. They're not big. <laughs> They're like in little cans that we're going to plant at the college. So, and they look beautiful. Like they're these little itty bitty roses with beautiful blooms on them right now. Um, anyway, so once we get those kind of projects cleared up and you know, 
it's all a shifting process. I am excited though for that space. Once those high tunnels are gone, we'll either treat it like we're treating the whole area and do some trees and evergreens, which is probably what will happen. But in my mind, I'm like, ooh, should I make that my permanent vine crop area? Yeah. Or like maybe, I don't know, maybe we do more berries over there. What could we do, you know, that's really fun and different? It's a pretty good size, like, yeah, chunk of space. It is. Um, maybe we use that for exper experimental stuff like we did with the tomatoes. Or maybe, I haven't done a lot of research. Can you plant dahlias in the same spot year after year? Like, maybe it's our dahlia. I mean, Kirk does it. Yeah. Um, and his are, like, phenomenal. So maybe we have, like, a permanent area that we do something, something like that. I don't know. Jacqueline said, am I the only one who finds it rewarding how easy the espoma bags open? Yes. I love that. When you just pull aside and you get a clean tear on those soil bags or yeah. the land and sea bags. Oh, there's nothing more frustrating. What bags, what bags don't open? There's one type of soil I've used in the past that they just, you have to have a cutter. I don't know. It's a little, it's the, it it's is the little, the little things, things yeah. that really do add up and make it a more pleasant experience. Julie said, I've seen you plant butterfly bushes before. Do you not amend with land and sea? Do they not like rich soil? No, we don't do any amendments. No starter fertilizer with butterfly bushes. We also plant the root ball high. Uh, I wish I would have talked a little bit more. Sometimes I just forget, you know, I talk about amendments or what we're using so much that sometimes I just kind of forget. Um, sometimes it gets edited out. Um, but in this case, I truly didn't use anything with those plants and um they just don't want it they don't like it we did a butterfly bush video not that long I mean, it's been maybe a few years ago maybe we can link it down below if we remember <laughs> but there are tips on planting and, and care and such in that video mrs danacy said absolutely beautiful question is there a reason you don't use gypsum out on the new property when you plant trees and shrubs do you put it down for the new grass yeah i just spread gypsum uh i spread eight 50 pound bags of gypsum 400 pounds yeah on the new property just, just a couple days grass, ago just the grass right just the grass and you know what in the future what i'm going to do uh, when the grass is in on the pathways i'm going to just ride on the pathways and try to shoot out as much gypsum as i can in the planting mm -hmm. areas does that make sense yeah. mm -hmm. well the broadcaster it shoots stuff really far yeah it shoots it like mm -hmm. i want to say 15 feet mm -hmm. you know so that's that's my plan i can't do that right now we're not planning we could put gypsum at the bottom of holes i suppose we but. could uh, i think with what we're adding though it's pretty good now gypsum it does help condition the soil it helps break up clay soil but it's pretty quick in and out is what we've learned um you know we've talked a lot with espoma about various different types of amendments and what we should be adding and while it's good uh, i it's going to need to be a consistent thing yeah i'd like to next year i'd like to get to putting gypsum like pretty much everywhere on our property mm -hmm like four to five times a year mm -hmm. maybe maybe that's too much maybe three so. to four times i don't think you can overdo it with the, with the gypsum at says do you not worry about the bark chips going into your planting holes my bark chips are bigger but i've been painstakingly moving them out of the way to minimize how many go in the hole when i plant something and it looks like you just get on with it does it not matter it'll they'll break down pretty quick i mean you don't want to fill your hole with bark chips but i don't think it really makes a difference and our goal is pretty much just get on with it Kind of people we... say that uh it's gonna steal nitrogen oh we're gonna do a video about that yeah i think it's it's not something to worry about if you're fertilizing on a uh, consistent, basis. consistent basis yeah uh shelly said how many acres is your homestead now with both parcels looks absolutely gorgeous um we have total 5.6 acres right 5.6 yeah that sounds right yeah Art Lady said, I learned so much from her, but I had never seen her answer even one question. Does she answer questions? Not on individual posts. Like, that's a legitimate question. I mean, here I am sitting answering questions, but I don't think everybody knows that we have a highlights channel and that we um, try to grab questions every week. There's just not enough time in the day. You guys know. I mean, those of you who are watching this know that there's a second channel and that we do answer questions um, as much as we can. Uh, you know, we've we've toyed around with the idea of having somebody, you know, like hiring somebody to answer questions, but I don't like that. I don't want people answering on my behalf because they wouldn't answer exactly like I would. It feels like it's not a... Not genuine. Not genuine. And I don't want that to happen. I want things just to be natural and I want 
I don't know. Not that I wouldn't trust somebody. Like, you know, there are a lot of people that I would trust what they would say, but you know, it's not said the way it would have to not be signed by me. Like it would have to be clear that it wasn't actually me who was answering. And I think that would be awkward, especially in a YouTube comment section. Like if there's an answer on a comment, it's Aaron or I, Mm -hmm. like it's not somebody else. Same with Instagram, same with Facebook. We don't have anybody Uh, managing any of that it is 100% us like I do 100% of our Instagram stuff unless it's a a video we've posted on YouTube occasionally you'll put one on IGTV like you'll get in there and do that but everything is 100% us which I think you know for some people that are a lot bigger than us that's probably not a feasible thing to do and if somebody wanted like I could maybe a lot more time like instead of posting as many videos maybe I dedicate a day to actually like Responding to comments. Responds to comments. I don't know. I don't know what would be better. We're learning here as we go. I mean, this is all this brand new territory for us as well. So the last video from this week was how we maintain our garden by using kind of a zone method. And then I walked through our Monday zone and I did all the work to show you. And that's kind of what this week is going to be about. In fact, by the time this video goes up, you've probably already seen a few of them. Um, but I've talked about our zone method so much and I, I'm such a visual learner that I thought it might be helpful to actually work through each zone and have a little series. Like this is how I make it through the garden in a week. Um, so like today is Monday, I need to go through Monday zone. And I actually did quite a bit last Monday to where I'm looking around, like I looked around this morning and there's really not a ton I need to do. It'll probably take me 30 minutes to walk through today's zone, which is awesome. Different times of the year means different things though. Anyway, it's a system to where we can keep things organized, things don't get out of control, and you can scale it to whatever size of area you have, whatever kind of time you wanna dedicate or can dedicate to it. Um, Yeah, it's just like almost like a budgeting system, right? Like that's kind of what it's a time budgeting system. Um, And it's about having a list. And if you're a list person or like an organizer kind of person, I think it might speak to some of you who are like that. Um, Anyway. I did see one comment too that said there was a light bulb moment when I said like we walk through the zones there's some things that um, need to be done but I'm not doing them because that's not part of our our zone those are extra projects you know like mulching or cutting back a big stand of whatever that's not actually what I'm doing in a zone what I'm doing in a zone is weeding deadheading looking for insect problems and edging grass if it needs to happen only those four things unless you have extra time for those extra things and that way you're keeping up on the little stuff which adds up to the big stuff in the end and then you can um, tackle those bigger projects when you have a little snippet of time here or there and it just keeps everything flowing really nice donna said i had a stroke in early june that has left me with some lingering physical issues i decided to follow your zone system and broke my garden up into five zones that i tackle monday through friday i use the weekends to catch up on anything i may have missed during the week because of rain or extreme heat and humidity i do the same indoors one zone a day gets cleaned and one load of laundry is done per day nothing gets too out of hand and i'm not overtaxed physically or mentally that's what it's about like there's lots of work always to be done but if you're not thinking about it as a whole you're only thinking about what needs to be done today you know the rest of it's going to get handled because you've got it planned for I love hearing that. I'm so glad you did that, Donna. Midwest Girl says, Laura, we all know you don't like to wear gloves, but how do you not get bitten, stung by bees, spiders all the time? I hold my breath every time I see you reaching your hands into those plants and along the ground. And what about snakes? (laughs) You know, I'm not super squeamish about bugs and things like that. We don't have any, the reason is we don't have a lot of like really scary things. So we have snakes, but they're little garden snakes. Like we do have rattlesnakes in our area, but not down in the valley they're like up kind of up in the hills um i think did i see one at my parents house once maybe not maybe it was just a bull snake we don't have poisonous snakes here it's not like i saw somebody saying like they have copperheads and the baby copperheads are even more like because they can deliver a full do- dose of poison even though they're smaller wow anyway like we don't deal with that we have black widow spiders and brown recluse spiders but they keep to themselves and we kind of know those areas like i don't roll into the irrigation boxes without doing a full inspection first you lift a lid of an irrigation box and it's almost like a 99 percent guarantee there's going to be a black widow in there i actually already instructed benjamin Mm. i showed him i'm like come over here (laughs) and i showed him what the spider looks like i told him to never put his hand by anything that looks like that and in those irrigation boxes that's where you'll find them so don't ever stick your hand in without looking you know i mean it's when i used to work for the cable company we had to open those pedestals that were in the ground. Mm. And uh, 
There was oftentimes spiders. Really? In there. Yeah, I would always take pictures of black widows. They're kind of cool looking, though, they are. when you run across them. They are, but they're not social. Like, they're not going to try to attack you. They'll try to retreat. They're not going to come after you. Yeah. You'd have to, like, come up on one, like, and put your hand right by it in right. order for it to bite you. Um, so we don't have anything scary like that. No scorpions or big, you know, ugh, scary, gross things. And I don't mind. Like, I wanted to be an entomologist when I was little. I wanted to, I studied insects a lot and like I didn't mind holding spiders and whatever, the non-poisonous ones. Uh, Mike have said, how to avoid bee stings while pruning flower shrubs. The best thing you can do is prune them while the bees aren't out. So late in the evening or first thing in the morning. Otherwise, I think if you're just going about it gently and you're not rolling up really fast into their business, I think they just leave you alone. They're not out to sting you. Um, and so like I work around honeybees all the time and I just do my thing and they don't seem to, I think again, you would have to put your hand like right up against one or hit it or brush up against it in order for it to actually sting you. Andrew said, could you please tell us something about the decorative concrete behind your left shoulder? How was that done? A stucco technique? It's actually right to my right, right here. It's just a, one of those concrete like pillars with a base and then it has an iron fence section. There were two of them when we moved into this property. So there's one right to my right by the fireplace. And then there's one we took apart in the front yard and we have it behind the barn. I still am gonna incorporate it into a flower bed somewhere, but they're just um, pieces you can order from. Like, does Henry Studio have any? I don't think Unique Stone has any that I remember seeing. Fiori Stone, um, yeah, some uh, concrete companies carry them. I actually priced out because I love the one in the front yard and they still make that one. Mm. I thought, ooh, what would it cost to like actually fence a spot with one of these? I think I needed like nine of them to fence the area. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was way out of the budget. Uh, Diana said, thank you so much for creating this extremely helpful video. I always appreciate any guidance you provide on how to get organized. Would you consider creating content about how you organize, say on a monthly, seasonal, and annual basis? I think of this every year when you post your annual bulb order video in the middle of summer. Who's thinking of bulbs in July? Well, I guess the real gardeners do. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, I don't remember. Uh, thanks again for all you do. My little garden thanks you too. That's really awesome. Um, you know, I haven't really figured out any other systems. I mean, the zone system was born out of necessity. Um, you know, we go through our spaces probably as often as you guys do, like once or twice a year, we'll go through the barn and like kind of do an overhaul. It's kind of like a garage. That's what we used to do at our townhouse. Like once a year, you're gonna like back the cars out and then kind of go through the whole space and have a giveaway pile and all that stuff. Um, I don't know, there's probably, there's a lot of really good organizers, like organizing channels out there. Have you ever like looked around? Yeah, I have. And, cause you are really like interested in like labels and Yeah, a lot and... of them seem like they're more geared toward women. Mm. I don't see a ton that are, like you garage. know. Like okay. garage, There you go, you Maybe found I an opening start in the market. A channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure my mic isn't gonna die. Um, that would be interesting though. Like I would be interested in watching how you tackle your stuff in the garage because everybody has random tools or parts and stuff like yeah. that that you're organizing. I think at the end of the day, people just want to see what kind of organizers you have, like what kind of totes you're using uh -huh. or shelving or hangers or mm -hmm. hooks, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, because it's so subjective, the types of things that you own. Mm -hmm. So that's really all you want to see is like, how well do these organi organizational tools work? Right. Eva said, Daisy May Daisy update, please. Do you cut them right down at this time of year? Did not see them in this video when you were cleaning up near that area. I'm thinking of getting one if I can find them in my area. It would be so helpful to see how they look throughout the seasons as my garden is small and I have to be very selective. Um, Daisy May is an amazing performer. Um, I cut them back usually, okay, so for us usually for annuals like salvias, veronicas, the daisies, there's a couple of different ways you can shear them back after their first bloom. Their first bloom is always the best. Um, so that happens usually May mid-May to like mid-June somewhere around in that time and by the end of June they're usually kind of spent so you can go in and like shear them back by half or something like that which is what I did this year I typically am the type who likes to shear them all the way back down to the ground it takes them longer to rebound but what you get I think is a tidier looking plant it takes them longer to bloom though um, with the the way I did it this year we just sheared everything back by about half same with the daisy maize and um, supposedly you're supposed to get blooms faster I, I feel like they look worse doing it that way. Um, so next year I'm going to be shearing my back. I think you wouldn't be disappointed with that daisy though. If any daisy you could get, it's an, um, I mean, 
when it's in bloom, you can hardly see leaves. It's just, it almost looks fake because it's so full of flowers. Donna said, breaking down the work into zones is so useful. Um, how, how have you worked the new property into your weekly schedule? The only part of the new property that uh, has been worked into a zone system is the cut flower garden because there's kind of five sections. There's the four corners and then the orchard. Uh, and Paul takes care of that right now. Uh, so he goes out every morning, uh, you know, Monday through Friday, he does one section. He just walks through it for weeds, makes sure that something doesn't need to be tied up. It does not take him very long. It keeps a, it really nice out there. Um, but I might show you, I might do a video where I just kind of do like all the zones in one, just kind of like break it up and say, this was, this is what you do on Monday. This is what we do on Tuesday. And then also on Fridays when we do the orchard area, uh, we take a look at the pathways for weeds as well. Judy said, do you just skip a zone if it rains? <laughs> if it rains. <laughs> <laughs> Rain is so atypical for us, and I know it's something that a lot of you guys deal with. We don't get run out by weather very often. I mean, our worst thing here is just the severe wind we get um, and severe heat, but we just kind of power through those. That's It's not like rain. Rain is different because it makes everything muddy and hard to work in. Um, and when it rains here for us, so like we kind of shut down and like want to watch from the windows with a cup of coffee. It's like because you know it's also going to end here real soon. Yeah, if it's, it starts raining, it's going to rain for like five minutes. Like, enjoy it. Um, anyway, if you get run out because of weather or whatever, you can just make adjustments. I mean, you could skip that zone for a week knowing that you may need to allot a little bit more time the next week to get on top of it. Or you can add it to another day or you could break it up. If you've got, let's say you get run out on Monday. Monday, it's raining. You can't do your zone. You've got four more zones to do that week if you're doing a five-day zone per week and then you can just say well I'm going to work you know just a little bit every single day add it on top of my current day zone and by the end of the week I'll have it all caught up. It's kind of just like a regular budgeting system you know you take from one you adjust in another mm -hmm. so if you want to go do something extra from your entertainment budget that month then maybe you take away from like going out to eat. I don't, is that in the same book? category we've done it several different ways to yeah, where it's like part of entertainment or not part of it i mean everybody's budget system is different um but yeah you just kind of adjust things to where it makes sense janet said the cedar shingles on the front of the greenhouse seem out of place since the gazebo is gone and everything is white do you have plans to change that i actually don't i really love the front of the greenhouse i love the way it looks it looks so warm and just I don't know. It gives it kind of like a cottagey vibe and we are going to be working some shingles in and some other projects that we have planned. So it'll kind of be look maybe or feel a little bit more co cohesive once we have them in other places. Springdale Cottage Farm said, love seeing the different plants in the garden. Do you recommend the hard bottom kangaroo bag or the soft bottom? Hard bottom, hands down. Not even worth buying this, the soft bottom for me. I mean, you guys see how I drag it around. It has to be hard bottom and they last a lot longer. Frankie said, Gompo Carpus, what's that? Does it have a common name? <laughs> I knew somebody was going to ask that. But yes, it does have a common name, and I'm not going to say it here on our channel. <laughs> kind of happy it came back, though. Like, I knew that it might seed itself. I, it was the first year I'd ever planted it last year, and some of it came up right around where I planted it last year, which is perfect. I'm having to pull it. Not, it didn't spread like crazy, though. I'm having to pull one here and there from other areas, but for the most part, it stayed right where I planted it. And last question was from Marley. What was the wheat looking grass behind you? Oh, when you were cleaning up the yarrow. We already talked about that. It's the avalanche calamagratus. And that is it, you guys, for today's recap video. I uh, hope it was helpful to hear some of these answers. Thank you all so much for all your comments and questions this week. Um, we should have a regular week, I think, yeah. this week. We should have full amount of videos. Six. Six. Yeah. Hope you guys are having a great day, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.